Hello, I'm Kainton the Tech Pro and welcome to this lesson on bounded model checking. Remember, this is part of the series of free lessons on software verification and validation. So in about 10 to 15 minutes, we are going to discuss bounded model checking. What are we going to cover today? We have what is bounded model checking, partial verification approach to bounded model checking, concept of path diameter concept of SAT problems and SAT solvers, mapping bounded model checking problem to SAT problem, describing a path of bounded length by characteristic function, logical notation for bounded model checking, that is script case structure, example of bounded model checking. Let's start with the first one. What is bounded model checking? It's actually a checking method used for model checking that checks the model up to a given part in the whole path length. So this is normally applied when the search space or when the model space is very large. So you have to divide the model space into uh, definite parts that you can check up to a given length. So it actually the algorithms for bounded model checking traverses a finite state machine for a fixed number of steps. So if we have 20 parts in the finite state machine, you can take let's say 7 or 8 parts and then check if violations occur within this particular bound. Now we have partial verification approach to bounded model checking. It means that the path is restricted to a given length just like we've mentioned before and then checking is carried out up to that particular bound. Now what happens to the rest of the path? After checking a particular bound, the, the bound can be increased to accommodate more of the transitions in the model space. The bound could be increased up to the length of the path diameter of the model. Now what is path diameter? Path diameter of a state space or a finite state machine is the longest loop free path in that model or FSA or LTS, Label Transition System. Now if you increase the bound up to the path diameter that will actually result in a complete coverage of the state space. Okay, so I've just dropped an example here we have this particular L, uh, this particular FSA, this particular model here. Now what is the path diameter is the longest path without loops. Let's try A, B, C, we have C, E, G, A. It comes back to the original part. Now, these parts have actually not covered the whole state space, and that is the challenge. We can't actually uh, use just one particular part. It means that for this particular model here, the bound has to be increased after the first search or after the first check. All right. Let's now look at the concept of SAT problems and SAT solvers because anytime we discuss bounded model checking, we have to mention the concept of SAT problems and SAT solver. In the previous slide, we say that we mentioned that, um, okay, let's first say what SAT means. SAT stands for satisfiability. So a SAT problem is a problem of determining if there are certain conditions or interpretations that satisfy a given Boolean expression. We are going to illustrate it for it to become clearer. So SAT solvers are applied in bounded model checking such that if there are some Boolean function the solver will search the model for conditions, conditions like values of variables, different values of variables that can be substituted to make the formula true or function 
to be true. An example is function of x, y, z equals x uh, and y and negative z. So x and y and not z. Okay. What will make this function to be true? What are the values of x, y, z that will make the function of x, y, z to be true in this particular case? If you try 1, 1, 1, will it be true? No, because we we'll have this, we we'll have the last one to be not z. That makes it false. So for this function to be true, x will be 1, y will be 1, and z will be 0. So if we put not z, not z, it becomes 1. I'm sure you get the point now. So try to assume some other functions and see how you can generate the values of conditions that can satisfy. This is a concept of a SAT problem. So a SAT solver actually solves a SAT problem by generating values. So this value we use 110. A SAT solver will generate this value for any given algebraic uh, function. Actually, Boolean function, not algebraic. So if you are talking of SAT solvers or SAT problem, the function has to be a Boolean expression that evaluates to either true or false or one or zero. Now let's talk about mapping is a, a bounded model checking problem to a SAT problem. For you to be able to solve a problem of large model space or large state space, it has to be mapped to a SAT problem and a SAT solver could be used to handle it. Parts of the bounded length are mapped to a Boolean function based on characteristic function. Now I'm going to use a pen to illustrate. So let's assume we have... The drawing is not very good. We have a model like this all right so this model how do we map it to become a SAT problem and we say that the paths are mapped to boolean function so these paths let's say I label this path A this path is B and this path is C Let's say this is S1 and this is S2 and this is S3. So how do we uh, convert the bounded model checking of this problem to a SAT problem? And we say that the paths has to be mapped to Boolean function sorry to to a boolean function based on a characteristic function now what is a characteristic function we are going to look at it later but it's a function of the path so if this path is a which is s1 s2 the characteristic function will be function of x1 x2 the boolean function is constructed as follows if the sat solver could not find a substitution for the formula then the property holds if the SAT solver finds a substitution for the formula, then the substitution induces a counterexample for the given property. Let's now take some examples. This is characteristic function definition CR for S to S prime for paths between S and S prime. From the initial state to the next state, S0 to S1, the characteristic function will be CR S0 S1 meaning that the general form of the characteristic function is CR SI SI plus 1 for the i transition I'm sure you get the gist now let's look at characterization of counter examples now we move from the beginning S0, S1 until we complete this, the, the such space or the model space. We begin from the initial state. 
Now if the counter example PSI fails, then there is a dis disjunction on the states of the paths. I'll explain this with the example in the next page. PS is the invariant characteristic function that describes the property of the model. Don't worry about this, if you don't get it clear, you will get it clear as we move on. So let's now look at this example. Remember we are trying to model a moving or transforming a bounded model checking problem to a SAT problem and we say we do that using characteristic function to do the mapping. Now let's look at the characteristic function for this example here. We have CR from S1 to S2, okay, is given by not X intersection not Y for 0, 0. Then we have we have not X intersection not Y. That is totally wrong. It should be not X intersection Y because of this one here. So I'm going to erase. So this is not actually there because Y here is 1. From S2 to S3, from here to here, so we have not X uh, and Y, then we have X and Y for the next for the next one. So the same way for S3 to S1, and the same thing applies for S3 to S2. So this is how you encode the model. But then this is just the starting point. Uh, we've actually gotten the characteristic function for each of the transition but to generate the characteristic function for the whole part that we are going to do in the next part I think I'm running out of time so we are going to stop here you can move to part 2 so that we continue from here if you've not subscribed please uh, remember to subscribe so that you can get updates each time there are new lessons on software verification and validation